Hello everyone, this is Father Mike Watson. I'm the current priest at St. Luke's in Somers, New York. Uh, I was ordained an Episcopal priest about a year ago and I've been asked to give you this little statement about my involvement with the Highland Educational Project in the Diocese of West Virginia. I first became familiar with Highland Educational Project way back in 2011 and I learned about it from some friends of mine who had gone on mission trips with me to New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. The specific friend that I'm talking about is Josh Sachs, the Reverend Josh Sachs, who is now the priest at, uh, in Lewisburg, West Virginia. And, and Josh grew up in West Virginia, and he told me about the work that he'd been doing with the Highland Educational Project. And he said, Mike, if you guys would like, why don't you think about doing a mission trip to West Virginia. And I said, well, what's in West Virginia for us to do a mission trip with? And he said, why don't you come and see? So I said, okay, we'll come and see. So I went down to West Virginia uh, that summer and met Josh, brought a couple of others from my parish, which was at that time Grace Church uh, in Manhattan, and saw the work that Highland Education Project was doing. And I was very impressed with the work that was going on. And most of the work was rebuilding and, and adding on to and reconstructing homes that had been demolished by weather and by the storms that had occurred there in, in recent years. And while I was there, I took a tour of the town, learned a little bit about uh, McDowell County and about Welch, where Highland Education Project is located. And on that trip, I fell in love with the place. I fell in love with the people. I fell in love with the work that was going on uh, with the bishop and his plans for what was happening. And I decided that I would like to recruit a group of people to come down with me and do some rebuilding work. So I did that. And the following two summers, we brought people from New York uh, and the surrounding area to come down and do some work in McDowell County. And I fell further in love with the people of McDowell County and Welch and the surrounding area during that time. And a couple of stories that I would like to tell you about is the people there that we worked with were just wonderful, deep-spirited folks who have had hard lives and life has given them some difficulties, uh, put them through some terrible times. And it's such a pleasure to be able to go down there and meet them walk with them through the storms of their life and help them and just let them know that we care about them. And one on our very first trip down there, we were working on a home that was occupied by a guy named Steve. And Steve was an Iraq war veteran who grew up in Welch and returned there uh, years later to take care of his family, his mom and his dad who were elderly and he ended up buying the home that he grew up in in his childhood, but he bought it sight unseen. It just happened to be on the market at the time. And when he got there, he discovered how dilapidated it was and how the last, the, the, the backside of the home was basically falling into the creek and could not be occupied safely uh, by his family. And he had two kids, young kids, and they, they slept in the living room because there was nowhere else to sleep. So we refurbished, restored, reshored up the foundation and built two new rooms on the back of the home for him with the crew that we had down there. And Steve was a lovely guy who we got to meet and talk to and spend time with. And I think that may have been the most gratifying work that we did there in McDowell County. And the next year we worked on a home, which was a mobile home of some people who had been, um, you know, permanent residents of McDowell County, right outside in the little town called Rotorer. And they had come upon some hard times. Uh, Johnny, who was the owner of the home, had a stroke, and it was basically resulting from the work in the coal mines that he had such breathing difficulties that it affected his entire ability physically. And so he had to retire, couldn't work anymore. And we went to the home and found the things that we needed to work on. And we worked on that for Johnny and Diana and their two grandkids. Um, and their two grandkids were living with them 
because Johnny and Diana's daughter had died of an overdose of OxyContin and the two grandkids were left alone and they were then living in the home on which we were working, which was severely in need of help. Uh, the windows were not secure. When I went there first to see the home, there was snow blowing through the windows in January and it was cold. It was, uh, it was a very desolate place for these two kids to grow up in. So we decided we would come and do some work on that home. When we got there to do the work, we discovered they had no hot water because the water heater had dilapidated and fallen apart. And these two kids who were living there with him had never actually lived in a home that had hot running water. So we got a new water heater, we installed it, and uh, we got to be friends with Johnny and Diana during the week that we worked there. And the, the child who had never seen hot water on the last day that we were there, I put him up on the counter to show him what was coming out of the faucet in the sink and he put his hands for the first time in his life under hot running water and his eyes lit up. Um, he threw his hands up in the air and he walked outside to our crew that was still working outside and said, thank y'all for the hot water. So these are the stories of the people in McDowell County. These are the stories that we build on. These are the stories that are about us. They're about our efforts to help all of humanity and to give a dignified life to those whom we care about. So that's why I keep coming back. And I'm so excited that the bishop and his staff have elected to get this program back up and running in the way that it needs to be and the energy of all those surrounding this. So that's why I'm going to be bringing groups for as long as I'm able to come back to McDowell County and do work for them there because they need us. It is not, it, McDowell County is a place that should not exist in this country with our wealth and our riches and our ability to help. So whatever little that we can do, we want to do. And I'm in hopes that those of you who see this message will understand my reasons for giving it. And it is that I think people do not know that there are places like this that exist in our country. But even more deeply and more importantly, I know that whenever I can do something to help another human being whose life has been torn apart by storms and difficulties and whatever tragedies in life, that it does everything, everything for me to enhance my own joy, to support my own joy of living. And that's what, it, it is a reciprocal relationship in which whatever I give, I'll always receive more in return. These are lovely people. They have, they have suffered through terrible, terrible times, both in their personal lives and economically. And it creates so much joy in me and also in all the people that I bring with me when I go down there that I fully and wholeheartedly support this mission and I would encourage you to do that as well. Thank you for listening. I look forward to hearing about all the work that HEP is doing in McDowell County and the Diocese of West Virginia with its incessant giving and hoping and helping for these people. Thank you.